It's the same view from uh, the table upstairs. Nice. <laughs> I didn't notice that before. All right, well, time to pack it up. <coughs> well, it's a rainy day here on the uh, airport limousine bus headed to Narita Terminal 1. Leaving Japan is always bittersweet. It's like I really like being here, but I also really want to get home. Checkout was pretty straightforward. Uh, finished breakfast, went down to the room. Uh, you know, did some last minute pack up. Uh, got some emails out. Um, I think we must be getting close. We're This is the name of the toll gate. Anyway, it's about an hour and a half ride. So, I've been doing email, uh, doing Slack, getting caught up on business things. Things are going really well at CIQ, so that's all I can say. But, uh, yeah, it's a, a very inspiring place to work uh, on a lot of different levels. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Um, I did, <laughs> so this time I actually did the, the uh, e-check-in thing for the Philippines in advance, so I won't be rushing through it on the plane at the very last minute as the plane taxis toward the gate. So this office complex coming up, it's, uh, I don't know if it's possible to see, but... <laughs> It's Fujitsu, Seiko, Shark, Cannon. Like Sony might be tucked back there. It's like <laughs> it's like the office park of all Japanese brands. Uh, I didn't I didn't blow my budget out at Akihabara on this trip, which is cool in the sense that I. Uh, discovered that the Panasonic Let's Note notebook that I really wanted to buy, you could only get them build to order. So that kind of short-circuited my plans to make a big purchase. Uh, their Let's Note business notebooks are really fantastic, and I've wanted, I've wanted one for a long time, but I have been denied. Uh, that's actually okay. I, don't, I probably don't really need uh, a new notebook, but either way. So I picked up some parts, you know. I didn't buy the hard drives that I wanted to get. Um, I was going to pick up some standby hard drives because I do have hard drives fail from time to time in my uh, in my little RAID array thing. And uh, they were actually quite expensive. And I think that has to do with the exchange rate. The end of the dollar is at like a 38-year low, you know. Um, I do know that the central bank is, you know, threatening to step in. Japan's had a negative interest rate for a while. It's, it's kind of a mess. I mean, they'll sort it out. It's Japan. But every time I jump on the subway uh, to go anywhere in Tokyo, it's, you know, it's going to be like 150 yen to 200 yen max. And that's a lot better than like 1,700 yen in a taxi. Japan taxis are incredible, but it's always my last choice. If I can take the subway and just eat a couple of bucks in the subway, I'll do it. Um, and most of my travels um, in Japan to and from meetings and things of that nature, I do take the subway. The, one of the things I like about the ANA Intercontinental Hotel is that it's right by the Temeki Sanyo. A, uh, that. It's, there's a subway station right there, um, right on the Ginza line, which is very convenient.
And I kind of have to pee, so I'm sort of hoping we're getting close to the airport. Welcome to the uh, Korean Airlines Lounge here in Narita Terminal 1. Uh, we were here before, actually. Uh, it's pretty basic. It's a lot less crowded this time, which is nice. It's a little bit cooler thanks to the rainy weather. Um, good view of the jetway, actually. Although this appears to be some kind of a motor pool. Um, there's a Garda Indonesia jet right there. And it looks like that Korean, I'd be willing to bet that that Korean Airlines jet coming in right now is likely the one we'll be going back to Seoul on, or Incheon. That's cool. I should have zoomed in on that. You know, my... It's not the camera, it's the user. I need to learn how to do a better job at this. So, not much going on here. It's pretty decent lounge. Very basic. Like, there's... You know, you kind of get used to lounges that have like these amazing food spreads. Um, this lounge, it's pretty much a cookie, <coughs> and uh, they have some limited limited beer, wine, and some soft drinks. That's about it for the huge Sky Team presence. Like I said before, I'm really surprised at at the very basic level of services in this particular lounge. Um, but it is what it is, right? Better than sitting out in the terminal, so. <sighs> Sky Lounge up here is like always closed, but I used to go up there. Looks like they put an A and A lounge downstairs. Huh. 
Star Alliance. I am not welcome there. Although I do fly United from time to time, not enough to matter, but, you know, it's okay. As you can see it all right here. So I'm guessing Terminal 1 is all Sky Team. Scoot is definitely not Sky Team. So they've got a United Club, a global, a global First Class Lounge, also United, and the Korean Airline Lounge, the A&A Lounge. Actually, one thing I saw, which was a transit hotel, day use kind of thing, with really great rates. I mean, and the pictures of the rooms look nice. So it's the last uh, boardings in about 10 minutes. I came back to the lounge. They have, like, I don't know what it is, but they've got the best soda dispenser here. Like, the Coke Zero that comes out of this machine is, like, perfectly mixed. Um, anyway. Yeah, I walked around a bit. I grabbed a burger at McDonald's. <sighs> and uh, about to get on the flight. Goes a Cebu Pacific jet. All right, here we go again. All right, here we are. The same kind of seat that I got the wine dumped on me, which was not great. Is it a 
recap on the way here, I took a red eye. About an hour into the red eye, I was fast asleep. And some lady dumped a full glass of freezing white wine right onto my sweater. I was soaked and suddenly awake. Um, you know, the, the net of that was I wound up not sleeping at all. And uh, that night, well, maybe an hour. And uh, wow, it's hard to start a day like that. Hi, team. We were about uh, an hour delayed uh, coming out of Narita. So, a lot of sitting on the runway, kind of waiting to see what was going to happen. And uh, it looks like the airport was congested. So there is a possibility that um, that I won't make my flight um, in Incheon. So there's a there's a couple of options. I think there's a uh, there's the possibility that maybe they'll get a cart for me and I can make it from my gate to. Uh, security clearance and then once I go upstairs from security clearance to the gate I think if they, they give me one of those golf cart things um, that's possible um, you know another option is I get rebooked on the next flight there is a flight to Manila at uh, 8 p.m. I'm on a 6 p.m. flight so that's lucky um, we'll see what happens um, mostly I just want to arrive at the same time as my luggage but Otherwise, the flight's been awesome. The service is excellent. The food is amazing. Um, I mean, I, I just have absolutely nothing bad to say about Korean Airlines. Um, they've been my, my airline of choice now for almost 20 years. So, you know, for what it's worth, thank you, Korean Airlines. Although, to be honest, it kind of sucks to be back in the economy. But, that's it. I think it sucks to be in the economy everywhere. Um, Alright, well, you know, I'm here. Um, I'm just stretching my legs a little bit. The flight crew has been pretty cool. The flight crew, the flight crew has been pretty cool. Um, yeah. Hey team. So, uh, interesting news. We were about an hour late getting out of Narita, and the delay could cost me my connection. I did talk to the cabin steward, and I asked her, you know, what the options were. You know, is there a cart that could get me through security quickly, um, and then maybe to the next gate? The problem is Terminal 2 in Incheon is really huge, and my experience is almost always, especially doing this particular run, is the incoming flight would be on one end of Terminal 2, and the outgoing flight would be on the other end. So it's just, you know, it's a sprint no matter how you do it. Uh, I don't necessarily want to beat my luggage back to Manila either. Um, there is an 8 p.m. flight. If I can get on that flight instead, that would be cool. I'd be fine with that. I can hang out with the, uh, hang out in the lounge for a couple of hours. Um, my flight is set to depart at 6.35. Again, questionable if I'll make it. There is a flight around 8. It gets into Manila at like, you know, 11.45. A little bit later than I'd like, but, you know, that's okay. Um, service on Korean Airlines is always amazing. I've been flying Korean Airlines now for about 20 years. Uh, I'd love to hit a million miles on Korean. Um, I'm getting there, uh, slow, slowly. Um, you know, they're generally on time. This is actually the first flight I've been on that has ever left as late as it has. Um, that's due to congestion at Narita. Um, service and business class is always phenomenal, and one thing I really like is the soup. They didn't have it on this flight. They did, however, on the flight coming over. The soups on Korean Airlines are fantastic. The, they always have a, a beef or a chicken entree. You know, for those of us who are kind of on a Western diet. And uh, that is, again, exceptional. Great food, great service, relatively comfortable seating. I'm not actually crazy about these seats. They're very much the old style. Um, 
two by three by two layout in business class. I mean, it beats economy. In economy, it's a sardine can back there. Um, but you know, the problem with these seats is that the person next to you can easily dump a drink on you, which is what happened on my flight over. Um, so that said, um, so far really enjoying the flight. There's about 40 minutes left in it. I'm just up and stretching my legs. Um, you know, figured I'd do a little walk through. This is the kitchen and the galley area. Um, it's kind of that area between business class and economy. The, I think the production galley is right there. Um, this seems to be all like snacks and beverages and duty free. You know, a typical Boeing 777-300, um, I'd like to say that there's something unique or special about it, but not really. <laughs> Alright, well hey, um, if you find this kind of content interesting, please like, subscribe, comment, and share with your friends. It'll make my wife very, very happy. Um, this is Sherry Ann's channel, but for some reason, I'm holding the camera. Um, I do love this, though. You know, I like meeting with customers. I like going places. Uh, I like helping people get what they want. Yeah. So here we are at the ass end of the airport. Transfer is far. And uh, we don't have much time to do it. So uh, the flight that we're going to pick up is actually way on the other side. So hopefully there won't be a huge line in transit. So uh, what we're going to do is walk down here and, uh, oh, you know, we might be closer than I thought to the uh, transit uh, thing. Okay, well, that's good. Oh, here comes another flight. I got to walk faster. Oh, no. All right. All part of the adventure. But uh, I love seeing 747s. I don't see one right now. I did see one on the other side just as we got out. My hope is that, uh, that my uh, connecting flight will be a 747. Then maybe I can get my seat changed. See if I can score an upper deck uh, aisle seat. Terminal 2 transfer. Here we go. Faster, faster. Luckily, most people who fly Korean are Koreans. So this is where they're going. We shall see. All right. Oh, thank God. All right, I gotta grab my passport. Unbelievable. That is the fastest I have ever cleared security in transit in this airport ever. There was no line. I'm not traveling with a laptop. You know when the bag comes out of the thing and it's like gets sent over to the side for somebody to pick through it and pull out every item? That miraculously did not happen. Um, so I breezed through security in probably under five minutes, which is impressive. Okay, where's my gate? Uh, let's see. 18, 55. Okay, come on, switch to English. Nope. There's my flight. 
Alright. Let's see my flight. That's problematic. Alright. Boarding's in 25 minutes. Gate 254, which is either right here or all the way at the end. Let's see. Let's see what we got. 254. There it is. Okay, so I can run to the Miler Club Lounge. I can snag an ice cream or a snack. And then I can go right back. So this will be getting some steps in. But it can be done. All right, more later. Okay, so right up there on this side of the airport is the uh, Prestige Lounge. And they do not have the, uh, they don't have the haagen -Dazs. So we gotta go all the way to the other side for that. And since I need to get steps in, we're gonna do that. You know, my regret though is I really wanted to do some email and get caught up on uh, some work related stuff but actually technically in the United States it's Thursday night so tonight when I get home and I will be getting home which is awesome uh, tonight when I get home it'll be Friday morning in the US so I can stay up late and deal with whatever I've got to deal with Which actually is quite a lot. Alright, so this area here up to our right is the uh, Transit Hotel which is run by the Sheridan Walker Hill. And in my estimation it's the best transit hotel in Asia Pacific. The beds are super comfortable. The rooms are dark and cold. And they have an amazing shower. And then that lounge up there, the uh, Matina Lounge, uh, that's also run by the Walker Hill. Excellent catering. I mean, Korean Airlines is, I think, the best, without question. But the Sheridan Walker Hill, the selection is a little bit more international. And, uh, and actually, one of the things I like about it is they don't, you know, they, they make some simple stuff. They're not overdoing it. I think the Korean lounges, tend to go above and beyond when they really just need to go above. All right, battery's running low, so I'm gonna flip this thing off, swap out the battery, and then, uh, and then we should be at the, uh, at the Myler Lounge. All right, here we are back at the Big Bear. That nobody's ever gonna steal.
Absolutely nothing interesting. Okay, first class, Mylar Club. We're going to run in, we're going to grab a snack, and then we're going to turn around and go back to gate 254. See, you don't get this kind of excitement on those other YouTube channels. And if this is interesting, like, subscribe, comment, share, do the thing. It'll make my wife uh, feel like I'm doing my job. This being part of my job. I have a real job. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to put the camera down while I get checked in. But I do want to get an uh, image of this 747 model, which I love. <laughs> because... It does not get better than being right up here. That is the place to be. And if I'm lucky, that'll happen today. All right, we're checked in. Let's go in. We've been here before a couple of times. I've got all of 10 minutes to enjoy it. Let's make the most of that. It is 1739. Boarding is at 17.55, so. That's my bag. Of course, today the menu is amazing. Okay, very small. I've got uh, what could be chicken or fish, and then two prawns, and a little bit of ice cream. So, it is... I have ten minutes to, I have five minutes to enjoy this. So the shrimp is quite good. And yeah, this is some kind of fish. Let's do this. <clears throat> Okay, so like I said, the food was fantastic. Beef, duck, prawns, fish. 
<clears throat> and awesome breads and cheeses. And I love the cheeses. And their Waldorf salad here is just fantastic. So, and then of course there's a bar service. They've got tortilla chips and usually some pretty good wines. And then the hard stuff. Places to sit. There's the conference room I get kicked out of. <clears throat> That's not actually a first. And then over there, there's the relaxation room. It's pretty cool. I did a call in there, because I was the only one in there super early in the morning. Okay, it's 17.52. And I've got to make it to gate 254, so. I see it. Luckily, since I'm going business class, I can pretty much board any time. And I don't have a carry-on, so I'm not really worried about overhead space. But I do like to get on early so I can get some shots of the seat. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, give you guys kind of a general vibe of what the flight's going to be like. And, uh... Apologies to Ellen and Kyla, there's just no time to go cosmetic shopping on this trip, but you guys are going to be running through this airport in about two months anyway, so... No, it is not a 747. Bummer. Huh, I don't see that 747. Maybe it left. So that's where we came in, way down there. It's like straight ahead. Take a look out the window here. Oh, there's the, well, there's a 747 way out there. Yeah, it must have pushed back. That's the control tower. Alright. Let's get, let's get on the flight. This thing's recording. Not recording is kind of the thing I would do. Okay. Check this out. This is where I don't get to sit. Well, crap, it's a window seat. I thought these were going to be cabins. I hate window seats.
All right. No problem. Ah. All right, so that's where I am. You can go the other side. Window seat, <laughs> which I hate. Standard two by three by two. Uh, Boeing 777 300. This one. Alright, so here's the plan. Notice no window. Well, I guess there's a window. So, what I'm going to do is uh, if any of these seats are empty, in Manila and uh, I don't see a mobbed airport full of photographers this time so they must not have known I was coming. Uh, should be pretty routine. I have to find that QR code for the customs deal but uh, that shouldn't be a problem. It's on my phone. So. Since I'm right around the corner from the customs line, I'm going to close this down and uh, pick it up on the other side and baggage claim. Hey team. Remarkably, my bag was a second bag off. Like I see it right there. Unbelievable. It's the one thing that's been early on, on this day. Had two late flights, but my bag is first. Fortunately, I can't grab it with my right hand because that arm is broken. So here we go. Ah! <clears throat> Unbelievable. Yeah. Alright, let's get out of here. Um, I gotta close this down for going through security or immigration or whatever it is. Making content. 
you get a picture of a picture within a picture.